where flavor gets its wings. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, and Shannon Gross. Shannon, Welcome to the show. You're looking live at Tostitos Championship Plaza outside Ford Center at the Star in Frisco, where there's some kind of team something going they on. A, they had a community event here today. I think it might be the Rookie Club with... Uh, with some uh, youth, some kids youth. Out here. Well, it, it is 88, 83 degrees out there with the youth. The high is eighty five. The low tonight is sixty five degrees. That is Nate. He is Kurt. You are Shannon. I am Zaddy Holly. I'm feeling Zaddy ish today. Together we make hanging with the boys a sports talk equivalent of Braille. People feel, feel the Niners when we talk. Oh. When we oh, speak, wow. let's jump right into Mike, it. Mike is feeling the Niners. Niners. Oof. Him, and, him and Debo got a little beef going on. Ain't no. Yes. Here's the thing: if there's beef. You got, there has to be like like rivalries. Yeah. Thank you. There has to be. It's equal, like a challenge. It has to be test. equal. <laughs> it has to be an equal challenge. Mike ain't standing on the firm foundation right now. I know. I know y'all don't want to hear that. Uh, I, but, I get it. I don't. I, I'm just like, dude. But but Usher since you as you ushered in the topic, didn't talk about it. Let's what, what tell what, us what all it, what how did it transpire, where yeah. it began. On his podcast last night, he basically said, you know, he didn't uh, he, Kittle was his guy, but he didn't appreciate the T-shirt. And then there's been more information that that came out. Kittle, it was a, a hat tip to uh, Plumber, Plumber, which played for the Niners back in the yeah, in the 90s. Yes. He had it. F Dallas T-shirt on under his, so he was like, "Some things just need to be carried on," and mm-hmm. this was one of them. And uh, he was kind of making fun of it, basically saying, I don't, "I don't know if I put that on on purpose. I think I just grabbed a shirt and it just it was on my loop. To, happened, to, yeah. <laughs> it was on my, it was on my wash loop. Yeah. So he was kind of making light of the situation, and you know, and and this that was today, last night. Michael went on his podcast and was just talking about how he felt, basically, that was too much and now it was personal (laughs) and that you know Kittle was his guy now it's personal now it's personal Uh, after the t-shirt was personal personal on Sunday but this was personal and now with the first two games you know laugh now cry later and we got Uh, something for y'all and I'm wondering where that something was on Sunday mm -hmm. a t-shirt is going to make you so first Friday Debo showed up yeah and then now And, and then today Jesse what happened well, Debo showed up on K. Okay, what's her name? Uh, uh, K. Adams. Yeah, K. Adams show, and she Left played her speechless. Yeah, she played the clip for Debo Samuels, and Debo basically said, "What? What? what, what, what y'all don't want to see us again? Yeah. Like, what, what, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Like, he like if, <laughs> y'all. Y'all better hope y'all don't have to see us again because it might be worse. So, hey, hey, hey Jen, they stand back had his picture of Debo choking the dude. Uh, oh, first ride. Go to sleep. Go, just go to sleep. Yeah. You know, I, I, and that's I, a danger. We talked about it in the beginning of the year. That's a danger of having a podcast with a active player that is a leader in your locker room and the the maybe the best player on your team. You know what? Let's yeah. let, let's gloves are off today. Ooh. Oh no! Oh. Here we go. Gloves are off. Oh, today. you've been playing nice for five oh. weeks. Gloves what, are off. Today. Is it? Is let's, it? let's let's talk about it. Okay. Let's let's talk about it, because we throw this word leader around, yeah. mm-hmm. and, and 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 leadership and leader and who's this and who's Nate's that. Covering up. <laughs> no, because I'm coming right behind it. No, because <laughs> I, I you know believe what he's saying is true. You you said something that I don't believe. Okay. I don't believe Michael Parsons is the leader you think he is. Okay. I think Michael Parsons is a damn good player. I think Michael Parsons is an exceptional player. I think Michael Parsons is one of the best players in the National Football League. I think Michael Parsons is good for Michael Parsons. I think everything that Michael Parsons does is to benefit Michael Parsons. I think Michael Parsons wants to be the biggest superstar on this Cowboys team. I think Michael Parsons is so good and good at what he does, if it happens to positively impact the team, so be it. But if it doesn't, Michael Parsons is always going to look out for self first. And so we, 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 we put these leadership tags and roles on peoples and players, and they necessarily don't buy into them. I don't, I'm not that I don't believe. I know for a fact Micah isn't the guy that's pulling these people in the locker room saying, hey, let's watch extra film. Micah isn't the guy that's saying, hey, we, it, it sounds good in the media. And because he can go out there on Sunday and impact a game week in and week out, it, we, we, we assume 
he's the leader. But you guys know, we we hear who the real leaders are. We hear who the guys actually look up to on that team. And I think we've we've tagged Michael Parsons with this leader or leadership role because he just so happens to be the best player. And I'm here to tell you that's starting to be so far from the truth. And it, it, just, it didn't come after this game. But, but, but what he did Sunday night in that game – and then what transpired on this podcast rubbed me the wrong way. You talking about the signing, the swapping of the jerseys, the swapping the of the jerseys after the game. You know, just not taking ownership and accountability. The comments in the locker the room. The comments in the mm-hmm. locker room. Then jumping on the podcast and then saying that, like a lot of this stuff is 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 you know, and I and Mike is one of these, the new generation. He, he wants to go and collect all of the jerseys. He goes to these NBA games. You see him at NBA games. He's a guy who's waits. He'll wait hour, two hours. Ask some of the media members who are at Mav games to get Giannis, to get LeBron, to get Steph Curry That's his jerseys. Thing. He likes he likes the jerseys, right? Yeah, but I, at some point in time, you got to be able as a leader mm-hmm. read the room, read the room. You just got the ever living careful, dog careful. piss beat out of you. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you chase down Christian McCaffrey for a photo op in a jersey? That's not what leaders do. You talk about you want to have the Mamba mentality? Kobe is rolling over in his grave right now. Kobe would never do, after a loss to a, to a rivalry, to a team that has beat the brakes off you the last two times you played them and absolutely demolished, embarrassed you, on Sunday night football, when the entire world is watching, it wasn't just a big game for the Cowboys. It's the most watched Sunday night football game in a long time. I think ever. It was a big game for the country, for the nation. Mm-hmm. And they watched you talk all this talk all come in this week. I told Nate two years ago, when they, when they were talking about, oh, yeah, you can get physical. You can't get physical with a team who that's, their, that's who they are. We talk all the time about um, identity, who they are. It's one thing to have tough talking. It's one thing to have a tough player or two. But the toughness personality ain't us. It ain't. Sorry. Hmm. And you look at what Micah has done over the last three games against the Niners. Six solo tackles. I think no sacks. Two pressures. It should have been personal a long time ago. It shouldn't have took a damn T-shirt to make this personal. So I'm all for people getting out there, making their money, doing what they got to do. But at some point in time, at some point in time, all this talk, whether it's the hot boys, whether it's, 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 it's the lion, whatever it is, all that talk has to start mounting up to something, not just talk, not just hot air, quit blowing smoke up our butts. I'm done buying it. I'm done buying it. If you want to be the self-proclaimed lion and the baddest bleepity bleepity bleep on the block. Alien. You got to show up when it matters the most. You got to show up when it matters the most. It doesn't matter against Daniel Jones. That's cool. That's good. Doesn't matter against Zach Wilson. The Niners, it mattered. The Cowboys circled that game on the calendar and the Niners circled your eye with a with a black ring. That's unacceptable. They left a black ring around your eye. You left a black mark on the calendar for that date. Did you just come Those up with two, I just damn it with that. That was good. <laughs> Those two maths ain't mathing. Mm. Nate, you said you was right behind him. What you got? I am. Nothing. <laughs> you know, I've always, I've always believed there's two ways to lead, but but one thing has to be very consistent when you lead. <clears throat> Michael Irvin was one of our leaders. Troy Aikman was one of our leaders. One led by example, and that was Troy. You know, and by how he played and the perfection he always tried to achieve. One led by how he played. And, and how he dealt with people. And how he practiced. The way, and I, and I tried to say this yesterday, and we'll, we'll repeat it again. We're going to say it for a four or fifth time. This kid can't read the room. You never saw Mike after a devastating loss. You know, you, you don't implement it. Coaches, you don't implement it. Everybody except 
yourself. When does it start with Micah? You know, uh, when you're taking it personal, and I'll say this again, you think Curse ain't taking it personal? He got to take it personal. He didn't have a nice game. You think uh, my boy, the left guard, ain't taking it personal? He's taking it personal. How about, man, the next time we play them, we'll be mentally and physically ready? We're going to study a little film. We won't. We're going to get a little better. We won't. You know, I'm just saying. We'll get in the media and do a bunch ways, of talking. It's the ways, it's we'll, ways we'll, you do We'll it. put on T-shirts. It's the we'll, ways you do it. I, I'm, I'm willing to bet. We don't, we don't bet in this show, but. If we did. If we did, don't look to the dollar. Don't have F49 shirts. No, nah, coach, nah, coach ain't going to let that happen. Mr. Jones ain't going to let that happen. They ain't going to let that happen. If they, if they, you don't, when a team is better than you, I've been where they've been and worse. I've been 1 in 15. I've been where they've been and worse. You, you don't do that. You don't, you don't do that. You, what, what does it prove? What does it prove? Even if you win the game, nobody's going to pay attention to that. You know, nobody but these uh, followers, you know, you may get somebody to like you. Ah, see, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. The thing is, and Mike Irvin said this, if you think you're big now, win the big game, and you'll be great. We haven't won a big game in I don't know how long. That's whether it's playoffs or the regular season. When it counts the most, we have not showed up as a team. So when you got guys jibber-jabbing and not being able to, like Jess said, read the room, I look at your players around you, I listen to what the coach is saying, you got to show some unity. And I want to say this before we go to this break. If I'm Coach McCarthy, I'm reeling in some guys. And if Coach McCarthy can't really any guys, he need to go to Mr. Jones or Steven or Will McClay, whoever can get can touch the guy. You need to reel in some guys. What do you mean get, by that? Uh, make sure everybody's on the same page. We still got 12 more games. You, yeah. you got to get these guys, hey, man, this is what we need to do. And I cracked the joke, the forest for the trees. I'm telling you, it, it's tree chopping now. It ain't about no big picture. You know, if somebody walk in there and to holler a Super Bowl, an NFC Championship game, hey, man, get out of the locker room. You're taking away from what need to be done. They need to learn how to play consistent. Coach, Coach Johnson told us one time, and it made the uh, announcers, because he told the announcers this. He was going up to Green Bay to play, play, you know, when the fields was on both sides. I can't think of it the way it was. But we went up to Green Bay. And then and the, and the now, Jimmy, what about this? Da, da, da. Jimmy, let me tell y'all something. Green Bay is not a very good team. And all I'm going to tell my team, if we just get out of here by one point and get this behind us because we had a bigger game the next week, if we just get these guys and win, that's all we need. Just play mistake-free football. Don't get no penalties. Don't turn the ball over, and they can't beat us. And, boy, they, 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 they went up in arms. They at Jimmy up, but we got, we got out of it two or three points, maybe a touchdown. We won the game, and we went on and went on. Yeah. These guys got to learn to just win the game. They got to learn to just win the game and be satisfied. And you got to, you got to have your stars involved. Our stars are not involved offensively. Now, y'all can choose who the stars is, but I know who the number one star is right about now. That's C.D. Lamb. They better get the kid involved. Game 88, don't give him the ball. It's a weird concept. You shouldn't let him yeah. wear, you shouldn't let him you wear gotta number two. You got to get him involved. And that's just, that's just how I feel, man. Because that's a bubbling situation. I'm telling y'all, yeah. that, that, so, that situation is, is more volatile, volatile than you think. I was going to say, it's interesting you said coach reels him in or, or – Upstairs, somebody got to reel them in because what you're starting, and this is outside perception, right? And and you right. guys may know more than I do, but you're starting to see Dak get frustrated in press conferences, post and pregame. You're starting to see CD physically, emotionally get frustrated. You're starting to see Micah talk about Michael said Micah said, "I don't think we were put in a position to be prepared for what they have. I feel they knew exactly what we were in." Kind that of comment, a shot yeah, of it. That coaches was, maybe. to me was worse. So, than personal. So, but this was what I'm saying. Like <laughs> you're starting to get like <laughs> you think Fred Fred Warner ain't saying that. Fred Warner's gonna be right. like we we go. But you know what we're doing. But you're starting. And to you see, you can't stop us. And it's been a long time since you. One thing they've done a really good job of 
is being a keeping team. everything Unity. in house. Yeah. And now you're starting to see this little fray over here, and then the the thread starting to get pulled, and then the media notices it, and they grab it, and then the fans grab it, and next thing you know, you got three or four different little things going on. It's like. Is this are they a team anymore? Which they've done a really good job. All the eight and eight seasons, you kept your business in house for the most part. Now it starts to seem like there's a lot going on, just not on the field, just outsider's perspective. Money, right. money, money, money. Let's it's take our first fun. break. Money. When we come back, do you have something, Kurt? No, I'm sorry to hijack that, Kurt. No, I know no, you no, had I, some stuff. No, to you try. didn't hijack it, man. I just, I just, I'm, um, you fed up? Yeah, I, it's yeah. it's been on my mind. Like this, and this doesn't usually. I'm not usually that guy where stuff lingers with me. Yeah, and I hold on to it. But, but I'm telling you, man, Sunday night did not sit. And I know I picked the Niners to win the game, but the way that the cow, it's it's not the loss. Because if they would have lost, it was a last second field Way goal. It. It's it's how you lost. You were undressed. You were undressed on national freaking TV. Pulled your little petite panties down in front of the world. Don't, do, don't, do, don't, don't say it like that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> and with no resistance. <laughs> Can we go to break? And just can, can, can we go to break? Can we go to break? Stop. Stop this dude. Let's go to break. Thank we'll you. We'll be right back. Yes, sir. <laughs> Fall is here, and that means football is back, bringing all the delicious game day foods with it. As you prep for all the big games, tailgates, and watch parties, let Yokiero be your one-stop destination for all things home gating. Yokiero's fresh, flavorful, ready-to-serve guacamole made with real Hass avocados will score taste bud touchdowns as you cheer on the Cowboys. Yokiero's wide range of mouth-watering and versatile products can be found in your local grocery store's produce or deli section. Grab some today. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with pregame sideline access and photo ops with current players, cheerleaders, and Cowboy legends. You want to stay at a team hotel, attend the best tailgate party in Texas, tour the star, and talk X's and O's with me, Everson Walls? With Star Sports Tours, you can. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. SeatGeek has your back no matter what kind of Cowboys fan you are. So whether you're a diehard fan or a don't really care fan, a we got them next time fan or we'll never win again fan, a here for the tailgate fan or a first one through the gates fan, SeatGeek not only makes buying and selling tickets easier than ever before, they made just about everything else easier too. So whether you're a here every week fan or haven't been here in years fan, SeatGeek has you covered. Download the SeatGeek app today. SeatGeek, your Taking the great Dallas Cowboys seats. How's Wingstop sound? Crispy, juicy, classic wings. Made to order, cooked to perfection, and sauced and tossed in those 11 soul satisfying flavors. Paired with hand cut seasoned fries, house made honey mustard, blue cheese, or signature Wingstop ranch. And of course, spicy Cajun fried corn. I think you've heard enough. Get your flavor delivered at Wingstop.com. Back to hanging with the boys. He says, Welcome back to the show. The show each and every day that I forget to mention off the top is brought to you by Wingstop. We're Wingstop. And the second segment. Of every we show. We still love you, Cooks. You you play for us, right? Is brought to you. He showed up. He, <laughs> Holy moly, he, he, he was out there. He was out there. So uh, I just one catch, seven yards. We don't throw him the ball, so, <laughs> him the ball, so I just wanted if he's still a part of Blockchain.com. <laughs> Thank you, Blockchain.com, for sponsoring the second segment of every show. Kurt, Yeah. we got some injuries. You want to run through the, uh, the bad news? Well, there was three big ones <clears throat> that came out of that game. Um, one, uh, Kevontae Turpin. He sounds like he's the least injured that's the thing uh ankle problem they're still not sure he if he's going to play probably not this weekend is it a high or, or a regular ankle sprain i think it's a high but i'm not yeah, sure if it's high. really what is a high what's the difference in a high and a like regular right here mm. Let me see. Lift that leg up. Lift, lift that poor chop up. Oh, there we that. go, baby. Yeah. There we go, His baby. Eyes up here. Okay. That, that lingers with you a little bit longer if you just got it in the joint. Yeah. Right here. 
I've heard too that the, yeah. if it's low, if your foot turns out, it's yeah. low. If it turns in, it shoots it's high. high. Yeah. Yeah. It turns in, and then high. weight the weight bearing on it is is it's, it's unreal. It's crazy. Unreal. So high is worse. Oh. They, yeah. they say sometimes high gets up into your shin. Right? They say sometimes like if you get a severe high enough ankle sprain, mm-hmm. like you, you're better off just breaking it, like just breaking the I've ankle heard and, that. and just letting that heal from there. Then the high ankle strain will take stays so with long. You longer. Yeah. yeah. What size uh, shoe you wear? I wear 15 wow. wide, 15 wide. That's a foot, boy. That is a foot. <laughs> what size hat you wear? <laughs> Not 15. <that> big. <laughs> my, 15. My body's so big it just looks. I wear seven and a quarter. <sighs> you that? How seven, tall are you? Seven and a, maybe seven and an eighth. How tall are you? Five nine. Okay. One sixty a solid rock. Yeah, you solid rocks. Look at that right. Look at that right. My right. Yeah, has got, 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 got a lot more practice. A lot more action what? than his left one does. Five what? Nine. Eight and a half. <laughs> I'm at least. I'm a solid five eight. I say five nine, but I could be five eight and a half. Okay. Bring in the measuring tape. Yeah. I ain't scared. Wing stop scared. gets you wing. <laughs> I ain't scared. Bring I'm in the measuring tape. I'm messing with you. <laughs> wow. Go ahead, Kurt. Uh, <laughs> stand for this nonsense. Uh, question you, in my. you could stand, but it wouldn't be a very tall stand. I don't, I'm, ta- I'm taller than Kurt Turpin. What's he listed at? Like five nine. Five. Yeah, I got a solid two inches on that dude. <laughs> solid. So somebody lying. Probably both of us, but I'm not lying as much. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, CJ Goodwin, our special teams ace, he is out for the season. Man, this is one's going to hurt more than you guys actually realize. Yeah. Like, what, what was that injury? Peck, Sh- Torres Peck. Ah, uh, and I was reading something that they were talking about two options: go ahead and doing the surgery now, ending the season, trying to wait, do a little bit of rehab, and see if he can kind of play through it. Mm-hmm. But it'll prolong the the surgery. So, but as of right now, it looks like he's uh, done. Ah, yeah, Dunsky. Yeah. That's and our it, guy, too. Yeah, his, given his age, he might be done, done, huh? With CJ? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just no, wondering. not not for the peck. No. No. Peck, you know, he can come back. As long as he peck. got legs and yeah. upstairs, yeah. he can play yeah, special teams. He's got that, so he should be good. The yeah. other one, obviously, is uh, Leighton Vander Esch. They're saying four to six weeks. Neck. But he could be the season with his neck issues in the mm. past. And that so. could be, I mean – this might be the one who we'll might, see you yeah. when we see you. Have brother. to talk yeah. about. You we'll got to start talking about for you. this for this particular player. Yeah, yeah. is it, he's had a history with that yeah. stuff, right? I mean, he came into the league. Yeah. with the neck with the neck. We will we'll see you when we see. And you, he's my had friend. some dingers <laughs> along the way. So yeah, mm-hmm. thoughts are with that dude, man. Yeah, man. Hope everything works out all right. I don't, to me, that one. I mean, that the linebacking course so thin. Oof. Is that which one of those experience? What you said, CJ is going to impact the game a lot. I agree with that. Turpin. I mean, he was becoming quite the little, not gadget guy, but I mean, he can catch, he can Score run it out of the backfield. Yeah. I mean, and then obviously Leighton, like, which one of those, those are uh, three big deals. Yeah. yeah. To me, it's Leighton just because the position's so yeah, thin. I'm so thin. I mean, you got Delonte Clark and Marquise Bell, who's undersized for a linebacker. They've got, what, 15, 25 games. Did you of, call that man Dante Clark? Did I? I think you did. Demon, 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 Demon Clark. Demon Clark. Sorry. Can't Sorry, Demon. D- Mr. Clark didn't mean We to do see that. what you think about Mr. Clark. Yeah. But I Wouldn't mean, they say, no make a play. I'll know your name. I'll learn your name. I'll learn your name. Make a play. I'll learn your name. But, uh, I mean, there's just there's not so much does Mike, there. So does, does Mike have to play more linebacker now? I think he has to. I know you've been preaching that it's, wasted. it's a wasted snap, but what who you else have? you got? You got to get on that phone. They got to bring some guys. Got to get on that right? phone, man. Got to get on that phone. Jabril Cox is on the practice squad. Um, he's on... Washington. Washington's practice squad. Maybe you call him back up and make him active if, if the Washington doesn't elevate him. Um, there's some free agents out there. But I'm telling you, man, any waste to rep where 11 is not going forward after the quarterback is a waste to rep to me. I tried to tell a few people this because everybody's saying, oh, we got Michael Parsons. I'm going to tell y'all something now. He ain't played linebacker, real linebacker in a while. So what, you going to blitz him every down, even on the rundowns? Because his instincts ain't going to be as sharp. So it's going to take a couple of games. So when y'all get mad at him because he don't react as fast as y'all want to, just remember, and he, he don't hang gaps. with the boys. <laughs> he <laughs> don't hang with the boys. <laughs> you have to be disciplined. That's what Leighton had was, it, was his discipline. Now, 
Michael, I know what Jesse has said, and I've agreed. Now, we, if you go to linebacker, we're going to find out. Because you're going to have to make them big boys up front be real disciplined. Mm-hmm. So we, <laughs> we'll find out. Mm. And a little bit. Can, I'm sorry, before we leave that subject, can they work around having a thin linebacking core? Yes, and it's going to kill them. Oh, <laughs> It's not like you can work around it then. Yeah. How do you anywhere. work around that? You gonna you gonna put uh, uh what's my homeboy from Fam? You 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 can Bell. put him in uh, Bell. Bell. You can try to put him in there. We put them uh Demone. So you go put Clark these, in the middle. Some of these hybrid yeah. safeties. Some of these the hybrid mix. safeties. Mm-hmm. You you go and it'll be it will be a about disaster. Run, run stop yeah. hell. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You might even try. you might even have to go to kind of a, almost like a five two look, bringing an extra down lineman. If you're gonna make Damone Clark yeah. that other linebacker and Marquise Bell or, or yeah. Donovan Wilson or Jalen yeah. Curse, because now what you what you get up you get another bigger body up front mm-hmm. in hopes that you're able to keep those guards and centers from reaching that second level in those in those combo those dual blocks because through the course of a game it's it's okay for situational football but if if, if you locked in, if you have to, if you have to have Marquise Bell or J. Ron Curse or Donovan Wilson as and Demon Clark every down. as an every down, Woo. I mean, it, it'll work every now and again. But teams they, are just going to say they're going to hit you. All right, let's see. Let let's see how much this safety wants to deal with a three hundred twenty-five yeah. pound dude. Yeah. Let's see how much bend you got before you break. They're probably yeah. going to bring Keep up pounded. sign a, mm. sign Malik Jefferson off the practice squad. But I mean, he's been a special teamer primarily. Yeah, line. you got to play though. Yeah, you got to play. So this is another this is another good test for Dan Quinn. Now you have to be able to to institute. Can, can, I, can I say something about Dan Quinn? Sure. Mm. People, I said it when we lost against the uh, Cardinals. Cardinals. I'm gonna say it again. And Jesse has alluded to to it. Dan Quinn is only as good as his players. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Quinn can draw it up. But if you have nobody to execute it, yeah. sorry. That's a great point. So, before we go to break, let's just think about this. 5'8", five, 5'6", five, 5'9". <laughs> five, think about it. Let's go to break. <laughs> no, we're not going to break yet. <laughs> you like that, Jeff? Jeff, tell that me you good. like that. That was good. That was so, good. I got to give you some love on that one. Seven, so he got, he He's 5'7". So, got, see, yeah, I, I got, got a it. solid two inches yeah. on him, so I'm 5'9". I'm not going to Well, you said that with great pride, yeah. too, boy. Yeah, five, when's the last time a 5'9 guy said, I am every inch of 5'9". I'm taller than him. him. <laughs> and he was a pro football player. How tall is Deuce? I have two don't do that. Five, don't do five. that. I'm t- I got two of them. <laughs> don't do that. Two don't of them. That. So, question for you guys. So, we're, we're five games in, and we're talking about these things that are seems like, and it all the sky is always falling when you're outside looking in and you're a fan, and this is what we do. We try to find things to talk about, right? And hopefully – you know, it's like normally it's like the first couple of games of the season where everything you talk about is great. But then when everything's not so great, then you talk about other things. So we're starting to find little things, little threads to pull, right? If you go, let's just say theoretically, you go to L.A. and you lose this game. Mm-hmm. You're on a two-game losing streak. You got your – but handed to you the week before. You lost to a team that nobody thought you were going to lose to. You're three and three. Y'all, please, Cowboys. I know they listen to us in the locker room. Win this game because I do not want to go into a bye week with them losing two in a row. And that's all we're able to talk about for two weeks straight. Is that, the, is that we do the mix match shows? We're yes. One, I think. One. But. Yeah, that I mean, I don't. They gotta on, win this. Put week. me on from, shots for mm-hmm. my sake. My sake. Put me on that show. My we sake. Like you. That's <laughs> out of our hands, Jesse. That's that's way. Think, you know, at the beginning of the season, this Chargers game was kind of like, eh, whatever. But now this is a big this game. Seems like a big game now, given that if they, they two and two coming off a of bye week, then they've won their last two. Yes. They got Eckler back. I mean. Their defense is shit, but still. Oh, their this, defense, defense what? is what? Their defense Shaky. is what? Oh, oh wow. what? That's not Ooh. what you said. I they know. got Cleo <laughs> Mack with six, <laughs> with six sacks and, yeah. and and what, Joey? Joey Bosa. Joey Bosa with three. Yeah. And you know you know, Mr. Moore over this there circled this date as soon as he got hired. Yeah. Is it going to be the black eye? Is it going to be the black eye? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 
But it's a big game. So, I mean. Well, did you see that stat that um, teams that have lost to the 49ers? 15 and 1? 1 and 15. 1 and 15, yeah. After. Wow. Is that because they're so the beat only, up? The only one win was Pittsburgh this year. They beat Denver the next week. It was awful. Yeah, that's what I was, I was talking about. Yeah, dude, after you play the Niners, it's such a physical game. It, it carries over. I remember we had a stat like that a long time ago when we played. My teams after they after yeah, I after, the we, after we beat them, boy, we woof them up. Oh, you gonna lose too, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be two in a row. Play next week. Yeah, we gotta play. Just mark them up. <laughs> so, is this thing? Is this the beginning of it falling apart? No, falling no. apart. Or should we no. just tap the brakes and be like, look, nah. you got beat by a great team. They mm-hmm. beat the crap out of you. Got beat by a good team. No, you got beat by a great team. Mm-hmm. You got beat by a good team. Great team. Be good team. You don't think the 49ers are great? But uh, okay. They made it to the they did make it to the NFC championship game. You know, and they're so mad that they're trying to make a run through everybody to the Super Bowl. But I mean they have it, they have a legitimate excuse. They literally lost they quarter, every single they, quarterback they, they had on their the roster rest, yes. to play in that game. So I I think they look up and go. We like our chances. Yeah, our if time. we if we get back to that moment again and, and our quarterback is healthy, you know what, y'all? I would die. For this, d- these last 10 seconds that we just had, I would die for us to say, you know what? We were in an NFC Championship game, and we literally lost all our quarterbacks. Because you know what I keep trying to tell y'all? We had that conversation in 30 years. Mm. But we yeah. keep going to the Super Bowl every year. <laughs> I would really like to have a real, realistic conversation like that one time. Before they fire me or I quit, I get too old, just say, hey, fellas, we're in the NFC Championship game. Man, we barely missed it because of this. You're you're probably one of the only living pieces that walk (laughs) in these halls that can actually say, hey, guys. We were in the NFC Championship. <laughs> like, but like there, there, are, there aren't many people who no. are walking the halls around here. Yeah. Around here, they they're around. They just they're not here on a daily basis. Yeah, the, the thing when and I, when that I, staff included. That's what I'm saying. When I when I when I have these debates with people, you know, I, when I have these debates, you know, and the first thing a fan want to ask me, is, seriously, Nate, seriously. And I would ask, well, how old are you, man? <laughs> oh, I'm 34, I'm 35. I said, it's been about 30 years. You were, what, four years old, five? When was that a Super Bowl? I said, I know you keep hearing about everybody talk about Super Bowl. And this is what I want to say. Mr. Jones has a right to say that. He has a right. The fans who pay and buy in has a right. But us who know better should explain better that this team is a good team. We're not a contender yet. You're talking about the Cowboys, right? The Cowboys. This team has constructed. We're not a contender. There's four or five teams, and I I listen to some great coaches say, every year they, they gather. It's four or five teams that when you look at it, at the end of the day, if you be true in your heart, you will say, these are Super Bowl contenders. There was a song I did when I was in like you know. middle school or something. That was a talent show. Was oh. Like, oh, yes. I'm the great pretender. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> pretend. But see, thing Jackson is Brown what? A song I'm pretender. doing well. <laughs> but you can't. I pretend. You have to be. Did you you have to be. You have to be in position. And I lost 42 10. You have to be in the position to be that. And. And I like how you come in being a true fan. Uh, I like how my man get the stats and what Jesse said. I, I, I like all of that. But when I'm when I'm sitting down and I'm listening and I'm watching the film, like Jesse watching the film, and I'm really looking. It was about the platters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm really looking. I'm asking myself, are these guys true contenders? Do it? Do it really? Do we have enough? to really push it over the top. And everybody is, to a man would say, yes, yes, yes. Well, if, if we got all of this talent and all of these great coaches, why haven't we been to an NFC Championship game? I, 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 I'm going to continue to ask that. Well, you we'll have, just, you just, have to prove just, it. Let's discuss it among ourselves in the yeah. break. You have to prove it. Because on paper, you're there. You got – too bad paper don't uh, – it does fly <laughs> confetti to the winner who wins the Super Bowl. You're right. <laughs> All right, let's take our last break. When we come back, more 
knowledge from Jess. From Jesse. When we come back. The great. Oh, hey, yes. Boy. I'm, I'm the great pretender. Pretend. <laughs> I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With Blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. How's Wingstop sound? Crispy, juicy, classic wings. Made to order, cooked to perfection, and sauced and tossed in those 11 soul-satisfying flavors. Paired with hand-cut seasoned fries, house-made honey mustard, blue cheese, or signature Wingstop ranch. And, of course, spicy Cajun fried corn. I think you've heard enough. Get your flavor delivered at Wingstop.com. SeatGeek has your back no matter what kind of Cowboys fan you are. So whether you're a diehard fan or a don't really care fan, a we got them next time fan or we'll never win again fan, a here for the tailgate fan or a first one through the gates fan, SeatGeek not only makes buying and selling tickets easier than ever before, they made just about everything else easier too. So whether you're a here every week fan or haven't been here in years fan, SeatGeek has you covered. Download the SeatGeek app today. SeatGeek, your ticket to great Dallas Cowboys seats. James right here, your 2022 Dallas Cowboys fan of the year. You know how much I love my Cowboys and I am thrilled to be talking to you about the 2023 Fan of the Year Award presented by Captain Morgan. We're looking for the ultimate Cowboys fan to spice up the game. That means you eat, sleep, and breathe the Dallas Cowboys. If that's you, or if you know someone like me, then go to DallasCowboys.com slash Fan of the Year and you could win tickets to Super Bowl 58 and so much more. Enter today. Welcome back to the third segment of Hanging with the Boys. Each and every day brought to you by Jigsaw, the official dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. <clears throat> and we are... Sounds like we're fed up on this show today. A couple of different yeah, levels. I think we're Five weeks in, we're fed up. Five weeks. Kurt? Yeah. How do you feel? We know how Nate feels. We know how Jesse you know, feels. You it's... it's a, like most fans, maybe, I guess. You we go into the season thinking, oh, we're going to the Super Bowl. We kill the Giants. We're going to the Super Bowl. Now, you know, sort of the pendulum is way over here. Mm -hmm. Now we get blown out, so maybe we're probably carrying it too far this way. It's reality Some, somewhere, somewhere in the, in the middle. middle. Yeah. So. Well, well, Jerry was on the fan earlier, the flagship station of Spicy. the Cowboys. Steven was on yesterday, and Steven was all business. And Steven sounded bummed out and was very short, direct, and to the point. Jerry – had a very overarching message for Cowboys fans. If you did not listen, your coach is not going anywhere. Your quarterback's not going anywhere. That's ridiculous to think about that at this point in the season. So for everybody that's calling for that, yeah. Jerry says that is not happening, that that's ridiculous. So there's that. He also had some other things to say. Can I, not, can I translate that for you? Yeah. Can I translate that for you? Mm-hmm. Before Jerry Thrones is anything else in the world, he's a businessman. 100%. He's a marketing genius. Marketing genius. Fills that stadium up no matter what. His job as the biggest kingpin and distribu distributor of hopium is to never let you believe the product is not good. Hopium. I like that. He is, I'm talking about nickel oh, and dying and them hopiums out. But his job is to never let you think the product is not good. Eight. Even when he sells you eight. a bad batch. Eight and eight. Eight and eight. eight, and eight. Said, hey, that's okay. Yep. I sold you a bad batch, but come on back, because I got more. Mm -hmm. And that is what he does. His, he he is no one is better at it, by the way. He is not. He is Jones. not. He is. He sell you a bad batch. He's not going to crap on the blue magic, and that's how he keeps you all. Hooked. But I mean, he's right. There's no way. It makes no sense to even have that talk. Yeah. Like that's your guy for this season, I like mean, it or not. Yeah. He I can't go that, on the radio and say, "Oh, yeah, they suck. We're getting rid of yeah. them, you know." <laughs> that, that's your coach for the rest of the season. Even behind the scenes, I don't think you're having those conversations yet. No. Or am I 
stupid. I don't they, think so. Man. You go out. And I do it, think that get blown that, out in Chargers. You, then, you know. I, I, that loss of the Niners. That there hurt. was some. There was some conversation. I'm not saying there was conversation about the quarterback or the head coach, right. but there was some conversations about who they are as a unit on the ride home. Because mm-hmm. I don't. I don't believe they expected to come into that game and leave on the losing end like that. There was some conversations. There was conversations on the way home. And again, Jerry's always going to come up and put on a great face. And again, he's going to be the greatest distributor of hopium in the planet. I mean. Carlos was uh, Escobar style. That's how good he's going to be with, with distributing that hopium. But there, there, there had to be, there had to be, there had to be. As a business person, when you take a when you take a hit like that, if if you owned a business and you took a large hit in a day like that, you gotta hold. Let's hold. Time out. Let's bring the staff together. Let's. <laughs> what happened here? Mm-hmm. What, what someone? And how do we get better? What someone we tell fix? me what happened. Right. And 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 you guys assure me this won't happen again. Right. I get that they're good, but boy, yeah. that we didn't look like we belong on the same field with them. Y'all gotta tell me. Someone has to tell me <clears throat> how this gets rectified. And the answer that you guys deliver to me better be good. Cause I'm not taking no don't you don't give me no fluff. Give me some real life situational things that make me feel better about what I saw in that football field Sunday night. Yep. Um, what did you think, though, of, of that same interview with Jerry? He had a little – he didn't exactly come out <coughs> for his full supported lamb, did he? I mean, mm. he, he – What did he say? Well, I was – question was something along the lines of should they throw the ball more yeah. than lamb. And Jerry said – I'm not worried about throwing the ball to Lamb. I want to spread it out everywhere, you know, mm-hmm. which probably not what Lamb wanted to hear. Right. <laughs> is he is he in a contract year? Mm-hmm. So he's he needs mm-hmm. numbers. Whether he's here or somewhere mm-hmm. else. This the the targets directly impact his mm-hmm. his bank account. Mm-hmm. So you okay over there? Mm-hmm. We start talking about money. If you notice that Jesse just <laughs> <laughs> you want to turn me on, start talking about them dollars. But I mean that's I mean that I think that probably from his side he's the like trailer park and money. Woo. <laughs> get me excited. I gotta I gotta get my targets. I gotta get my catches, my touchdowns, my numbers and especially when everything has been pointing in that direction. Every year you've elevated your game, your productivity has gone up, your numbers have gone up, your attempts have gone up. It's it's done that for the last three seasons for him. So it's like all of a sudden now. And you like to believe when you see all the contracts that have gone out for the receivers. Now, do I put CD in the class? Do I do I pull up? Do I put CD in the class of the Jamar Chases of the world, the Justin Jefferson, the Tyree Kills of the world? No. Why? I, I, why? I'm just, I'm just saying why. I mean, can does he not have that ability? I, I'm saying explain why. Yes. To okay. Oh, I was like, yeah, oh, okay. I was like, whoa. Funny, I'm like, explain why. I, I I thought that CD was going to take that jump this mm-hmm. year into that elite class. I, I thought the work that he put in, we all talked about the way his right. body looked, you know, being in this offense, the maturity. There's something just about the level of maturity as you begin to up your game and up your game. I thought this year he was going, you know, all the talks. We watched training camp, all the talks, Texas coach offense. We've been fooled a little bit by that as well. Because we've all, you watched training camp, yeah. I watched training camp over here, you guys have seen highlights of training camp. This thing was wide open. It was wide open. We we saw a clip after clip after clip of the ball going downfield, CD making a big so, play. Brandon making a big play. Are they not getting open? Like, is it, what is it? What's it, going it's on? It's a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of protection. It's a little bit of not calling it. It's a little bit of not getting off the ball like you're supposed to. It's a little bit of the quarterbacks not reading it properly. I mean, it's too it's much a, going on to point a, at anyone. Yeah, so you can't a, say it's Dak. You can't say it's. it's. You can say, yes, it's Dak. Yes, it's Mike McCarthy. Yes, yes, it's the coverage. It. Yes, it's the, the receivers. Yes. So everybody has a major part to play and why the numbers aren't where they or, or why we aren't seeing what we saw and what was talked about during the two months of training camp, a month and a half of, of training camp. So, you know, and when you talk about, you know, TD wants to be in that $30, $30 million a year category of what some of these guys are getting. And what are they getting, Kurt? Well, depends on how you break it down, but at, let me pull up average yeah. salaries again. Before we get out of here. Uh, Tyree Kill. 30 million. See your top paid receiver in the league right yeah. now? Average. 
Devonta Adams, 28 million. Cooper Cup, 26.7. AJ Brown, 25. Stephon Diggs, 24. DK Metcalf, 24. Debo Samuel, 23.8. Terry McLean, 22.7. So he should be in that 20, Moore, probably 20, 24 million six. dollar range. No. He wants to be in that twenty eight. He said he wants to be there. He said he said, and the right. salary cap is going up next year. Right. So what Debo got now was a discount. Right. The thirty but, million that but Debo right got. Now I think he fits in with the twenty four. The twenty four. Stefan Diggs, AJ yeah. Brown, those Terry guys. Terry McLaren. He's wanting. To, he's wanting to get. <laughs> it's amazing yeah. how we can always thank for somebody else's money. Yeah, and we're talking about twenty four million <laughs> yeah. dollars. But I'm just saying, say, oh, we, we he right there. So you just say, yeah. he, CD ain't in what you he saying. He ain't here. CD said no. Nah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, bro, I'm Tyreek Hill. Bro. I'm Tyreek Hill, no. bro. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. What are you talking about? He probably. You know what? I could probably talk bad about him on the field, and he would get more mad about me talking about. Money, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, bro, don't talk, don't talk, don't come up on my you bread now. Nah. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I, ain't, I ain't down at 24, yeah. I'm up there at 20, I'm up there at 30. Yeah, put me right there with Tyree Hill because that's different. Because if you're a player and somebody talks about you playing bad on the field, if you play bad, you know it. You're like, right. I can't, you're right. But if I talk about how much money you should be making, yeah, that's subjective, yeah. that's yeah. Like, super. <laughs> Cause they can easily go. Let me negotiate your next contract. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me let me walk into the no, boss for you. I don't want to go down to yeah. eight bucks a show. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. What you talking about? Nah, you 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 about seven bucks a show. Yeah. You about seven fifty a show. <laughs> hold on now. I don't pay for my gas. <laughs> yeah. Hold, hold on what now, man. Now are right. we doing something Monday. Wow. That's some kind of an off there thing we can talk about. Mm. Okay, yeah, but, but if, if you, yeah, I'm, 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 but I, it's only hit my mind. I'm gonna start talking about money. Yeah. And he's like, wait a minute, hang yeah. on, I gotta, I'm gonna go get that. No, because I got other there. things to do. So I mean, I know we can still do it with three. I'm just saying, yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, mean, we'll figure it. Right yeah, because so we'll I, I think about it, and if I don't say nothing, I will walk right out of here. Be, <laughs> Smart. I'm going on. It'll no, be, good stuff. It'll good be show, with, fellas. It'll be hanging on the filter. I, I, was, I was worried about today. I was worried about what are we going to talk would. about. We 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 talked about some stuff tomorrow. Cowboys stuff. Offense, offense, Chargers, Chargers defense I tomorrow. Tell you right now, Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa. Bosa. <sighs> Dun, dun, dun. Get the preview tomorrow. Nice same time, right same place. Nate, Kurt, Jesse, good stuff. Chris, thanks for keeping us on the air. Multitasking. Jazz, thanks for bailing on us early. Leaving Chris back there alone. Churros <laughs> on me now. Bye. We out. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!